Let's talk about this whole crime circus, drip drop, Nicholas Scarpola drama that was going on because it's it's going to lead into the Idaho 4 case. So the back, the back story is a creator named Nicholas Scarpola claimed to be exposing Drip Drop, who is the host of the Crime Circus channel, and claimed that he knew his real identity, and here was a list of charges that he was allegedly charged with. Harsh Reality stepped in and said, none of this is true, don't believe everything you hear, something about cyberbullying and online harassment. Crime Circus, Drip Drop, he made a video exposing Nicholas Scarpola, and then made another one and, again, talked about the dangers of cyberbullying, and that we shouldn't believe uh, everything that we hear on the internet. Okay, these are my thoughts. If you're gonna create a, create a platform and put out information, in my opinion, if you wanna be taken seriously, if you want credibility, put your name to it. If you're not gonna put your name to it, I'm just not gonna believe you. I'm probably not even gonna bother with you. Number one. Number two, if you're afraid of people finding out who you are or uh, finding out what your real name is, there isn't any amount of clown makeup that you can hide behind to prevent somebody from, from recognizing you. If, if that's how you feel and you don't want people knowing who you are, you, do, you don't belong on the internet, period. That's it. Now let's talk about this cyberbullying online harassment angle to this, to this story. I have been, for a long time, I've been an advocate of online harassment, specifically of women. And, uh, you know, I've delved into some situations and uncovered some scary situations. And I'll just say this. When somebody's accused of something and their first reaction is not to prove that the accusations are false, but to expose the person accusing them, that's going to send up a red flag for me. It's also going to send up a red, red flag for me if... You don't want to reveal your true identity to prove these, to prove these accusations to be false. You know, Harsh said, uh, I think it was today in a video, that Drip Drop shouldn't have to do that, that he's built this platform and this brand, and he, sh he shouldn't have to sort of, you know, break the fourth wall uh, to, to prove that these, tr these, these rumors, these accusations are false. And I'm going to disagree with that. Uh, especially when one of the charges alleged is uh, involving a child. That's how I feel. But but let's talk about the let's talk about the whole cyberbullying thing. I'm just gonna say it. It is absolutely rich to me that these two creators are talking about the perils of cyberbullying and online harassment. Now you all know where I'm going here. At least you should. Let's talk about the surviving roommates and the amount of online harassment and cyberbullying they've received. Let's talk about it. Let's dig into that. Because they have gotten nasty comments on Instagram. Uh, they've gotten nasty emails and DMs. They've had to shut down their social media. If they go anywhere in the last year, she goes, Dylan went to a party and everyone's like, how dare she? How dare she? And that includes creators on this channel, creators on this platform. You cannot, you cannot in good faith make an argument about cyberbullying and online harassment and these kinds of accusations against him. Well, they're wrong and, you know, cyberbullying is dangerous. And then the, it, when, when your platform is full of videos throwing and casting suspicion at the surviving roommates of the Idaho murders. You definitely cannot play that card when you post videos trying to malign and slander the reputation of a dead man, a man who served our country, when there isn't one stitch of credible evidence that ties him to these murders. But you want to talk about cyberbullying and online harassment? How about the fact that his best friend came out in the media and begged people to stop talking about it and stop stop associating his friend's name to this case? Did you do it? No, you didn't. Now, before I move on to the next part of the episode, I just want to say I don't think it's a coincidence that the people most often maligned and slandered in the Idaho 4 case are people who can't defend themselves either because they're restricted by a gag order or they're being advised by a lawyer and they don't want to hurt the case or because they're no longer with us. 
make note of that. Pay attention to that. Because it's very easy to push narratives when you think you're not going to be held responsible for them. And it's also just an act of cowardice to go after people that you know can't defend themselves. This sort of dovetails perfectly into my next topic. I was watching an episode by the creator Murder Metal Mayhem, and I'll link to the episode in the description. And he and another creator were talking about the fret, Anon, the 4chan posts, specifically about the two Davids. Now, I've said that I think that whoever, whoever murdered these four students wrote that post. And I said that because I believe that they would want to brag about the time frame. And because they mention in the, in, in the post it's 19 minutes door to door, which I think is a little, little too close for my comfort, a little too coincidental. What, what strikes me so unsettling about that, about that post is if the murderer didn't, right? If he, did, if he didn't write it, whoever the murderer is, if he didn't write it, and whoever wrote it was just sort of making it up, who would name these two guys? Knowing how the internet is, specifically 4chan, knowing how things move at like lightning pace, and you put somebody's name out there, and within minutes, everything every, you know everything there is to know about them because they're completely exposed. What would motivate somebody to write that post and name these two brothers, by fraternity brothers? And keep in mind that it's said in the post that they went to high school together and they've always had this sick fantasy about killing people. That's a movie. It's called Murder by Numbers with Ryan Gosling. It's from like the 90s, I think. But watch it. It's, it's pretty good. 2002, I think. It's pretty good. You know, there are some cases of, of two friends carrying out the, these, kinds of, these kinds of acts, but they're pretty rare. But that said, if whoever wrote that post had nothing to do with that, with those murders, and, and was just making it up, why? Why would they go that far? Why would they go so far as to name these people? See, that's what gets me. That, like, what's the motivation there? Is it somebody who didn't get a, a, a bid to pledge? And so they're angry? Possible. Who would be motivated to put that out there and name people? Because these two Davids, are, to this day, are still, in, still dealing with constant harassment. Their names are forever going to be tied to this case because of that post. So I have to question the motivation of somebody who would write that post. Why would they name them? Now, I can only think of, uh, of a few motives. The, the first one being they were involved and whoever wrote that post knew it and was like, I don't care about exposing these two. They were involved with the murder. It's possible. Somebody who just didn't get into the frat or somebody trying to misdirect. I don't know, but I think the fact that those two guys' names were used in that post, because we're all pretty aware, right? We're all pretty aware of, you know, putting somebody's name out there and the repercussions of that. So you have to wonder who would do that? What kind of a person would do that and why would they do that? And that's what I want to know from you. Why would somebody name these two frat brothers in that post? Do you think it's because they're involved? Do you think it's because somebody's looking for revenge? Or do you think maybe there was an ulterior motive to that? Leave your thoughts in the comments.